So, you have yourself a GMRS handheld radio. You've figured out what a repeater is and when to use a repeater and when not to use a repeater, but you don't know how to make the repeater work? No fear. Randy's here to save the day again. I'm going to show you how easy it is to program a KG805 or KG905G GMRS handheld radio to use a repeater. I'm going to do it very quickly and efficiently. I'm not going to waste your time because I know that your time is very valuable to you. I'm not going to show some stupid fancy intros and fancy music like those other YouTubers. Your time as a viewer is too important to me. Now, of course, it's easiest to use the software to program your GMRS radios. I'm going to be using the KG805 and the KG905G from Wuxin Ocean. But neither of these radios are yet compatible with Chirp, so you'd have to use the Ocean or Wuxin software, which does not run on a Mac or Linux or Chromebook. Some people don't even have a computer anymore. Computers are old fashioned. A lot of us just use phones and iPads. It's okay. Or if you're out in the field adventuring, not sitting in your basement, and you need to program a repeater on the fly, the only way to do it is on the keypad. And these don't even have a keypad. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And don't worry, it's actually very easy. If a moron like me can figure it out, you'll be able to figure it out eventually. You might have to rewind and watch the video a few times, but you'll get it. And of course, to do any of this, you need a GMRS license. You don't need to leave a comment saving us all to tell us that we have to get a GMRS license. We know that. And even though I'm showing you how to do this on a KG905 and KG805, the basics are the same for pretty much any real FCC Part 95E GMRS radio. The steps are basically the same. The menus may look different, but it's all the same. Very close to the same, almost the same. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to program a repeater onto your radio is a repeater. You need to find a repeater in your range, in your neighborhood. Usually that means within 20 to 75 miles, depending on your terrain. A great place to find repeaters in your area is mygmrs.com. Repeater owners that want people to know about their repeater we usually put it there. That's the de facto place to find GMRS repeaters. Not all repeater owners want their repeaters to be used by the world, and so they may keep it on the down low. So to find those, you can sometimes join a local GMRS or ham radio club, or just talk to some of your friends that you find when you're out adventuring. You see them talking on a radio or on a repeater, ask them what they're using. Ask them nicely, they may tell you. But bear in mind, not all repeaters are public, and uh, you just may never get the information that you need to use some repeaters. Before you can program the repeater into your radio, you need a few bits of information. The first thing you need is the repeater channel. On a real GMRS radio, and by that I mean a GMRS FCC Part 95 compliant radio, not something like one of those boffwang radios that we all know are illegal to use on GMRS. If you didn't know that, check that video. Find out how long you go to jail if you use a Baofeng radio, a UV5R, to talk on GMRS. The GMRS repeater channels are all standardized. There's eight of them. Unfortunately, different radios display them differently. You've got 22 GMRS channels, and then once you go past that on most radios, you'll see repeater channels one through eight, or sometimes it'll be GMRS channels 23 through 30. Sometimes they may list them. They may list them who knows how. So what you'll need is the Frequency or the channel, which you'll find, for example, at mygmrs.com. But because different radios list the channels differently and it can get confusing, I'll put the channel listings and the frequencies that you may see listed in the information section below. And to make it even more confusing, some places, for example, mygmrs.com, will list two different frequencies. You only need to worry about one, so I'll list both of those frequencies and the corresponding different types of channel listings that you may see in the information section below. All you gotta do is find one of those and match them up, then you'll know what channel you need to use. Some website listings, or if somebody tells you a the information you need for a GMRS channel, they may include the offset. I know, it gets confusing, bear with me, because repeaters use two frequencies. There's an input frequency that you talk to the repeater on and an output frequency that the repeater transmits on. In GMRS, it's all standardized. You don't even need to think about the offset. It's always plus five megahertz. Don't even write that down. You don't need to know that. It's not gonna be on the test. But for some unknown reason, 
mygmrs.com often will list the frequency and the offset. All you need to do is find one of those frequencies on my list in the information section. That's all you need to worry about. So don't get hung up or confused on the offset. Ignore it. Doesn't matter. It does matter, but you can ignore it. Don't write it down. You're not going to need to enter it anywhere or do anything with it. The other bit of information that you'll need before you can connect to a transmitter is the tone. A tone is just a little code, a signal that you program in your radio so that when you transmit, you can't hear it, but the, the receiver can hear it and it won't allow you to connect to that repeater unless you're using that tone. That's just a way of keeping people driving by from connecting to and using the repeater. Some repeaters don't require a tone. Wide open to the public, anybody can use it. So if that's the case, all you need to do is go to the channel that that repeater is on and just start using it. Usually though, they do have a tone. So for demonstration, I'm gonna set up a repeater which is on GMRS repeater number two or on some other radios, it might be shown as GMRS repeater 16. So the, the way the number ranges work on most radios, GMRS channels one through 22, repeater channels, 23 through 30, those eight channels set aside for repeaters. So some will call the GMRS repeaters channels 23, 24 through 30, Others will call it GMRS repeater channel one, channel two, channel three through eight. Others, when they use channel 15 or 16, because the repeaters share the transmitting frequency with GMRS channels 15 through 22. Again, it gets confusing. You don't have to remember this. It will not be on the test. Don't write it down. But that's the logic behind why some radios will call it GMRS repeater 15, GMRS repeater 16, and so on. The repeater I'm setting up, GMRS channel 23, or repeater number 16, or repeater number two, depending on the radio. Frequency is 462575. That's the output frequency. The input frequency is 467575. So all I needed to do was find one of those two frequencies, check with the list of channels and frequencies that I put below. Now I know what channel I'm gonna use on my radio. So here are my two radios, my KG905G and my KG805G, affiliate links below. Pay no attention to this high quality soundproofing material that's part of my high budget YouTube studio. Just pay no attention to that. First thing I needed to figure out was what channel I was using. And I did that by getting the frequency. One of the ones listed on mygmrs.com was 462575. So I went to my listing that I've put in the information section below. And on this radio, that corresponds to repeater channel number 16. The repeater that I'm using has a transmit CTCSS tone of 67. The repeater I'm gonna set up does not have a receive tone. Some repeaters also use a receive tone. This one doesn't. So the first thing I need to do is go into the menu settings and find where to enter the CTCSS tone. I go into the menus and I scroll through until I find the one for CTCSS. Transmit DTC. On this radio, when you read the manual, which of course you've done, right? You will see that that's where you enter your transmit tone. So I hit menu again. Right now it's set to off and I'm just going to hit the down arrow key to go through the tones and then using the up and down arrow, I can scroll through all the different tones. This particular repeater uses tone number 67. Hit menu again and that's it. I saved it. I can double check it just by hitting menu again and looking I can see now that it's set at 67. Now on the KG805G. Channel mode 25. Oh, she sounds so nice. The steps are basically the same. I'm gonna go to the channel that the repeater is on, channel Two, four. 24 in this case, it's listed as channel 24 on the radio. I've already entered a custom name, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I need to find the transmit tone menu option. So I hit menu. Option. You'll see the Roger beep option. Always make sure you turn that on because the ham radio guys love that. Make sure a Roger beep is on. Write that one down. Okay, there's my receive CTC setting. I'm looking for transmit. Transmit CTC setting. So I'm gonna hit menu. And I'm... Gonna go through the list. It was already set to 67. 
Normally it would show as off. So I go through the list, hit 67, menu again, Enter. and it's saved. I can confirm that just by hitting menu again. It's already set and that's it. So now let's set a, a nicer name so that it makes sense like what I have on the KG. 805G, I had set a custom name. So I make sure I'm on the repeater channel that I want to customize the name, hit menu. I'm gonna scroll through and look for the name, which I think is item number 16 or 17. There we go, channel name, I hit enter. And I use the up and down key to change the letter. And on this radio, I use the knob to go to the next character. And I know that because I read it in the manual. And hit menu to save. Now I've got my custom name. Now if that repeater had a receive tone, I would just follow the same steps except put it in for the receive tone. All right, so now we want to check to see if it works. How do you know if you're hitting the repeater or not? I'm going to go to that channel that I've set up. And this channel happens to be shared with the local Chick-fil-A, best chicken sandwiches you can get. They're not using the repeater, they're using that shared frequency. Remember earlier I mentioned that the repeater shares channels. In this case, repeater number 24 shares channel 16. That's why on some radios it would say repeater number 16. So if you're listening on channel 16 and somebody's using that repeater, you would hear them talking. You wouldn't be able to talk back to them because your radio is not configured, well, unless your radio is configured to use that repeater, such as we've done here. So to test the repeater, basically what I'm gonna do is key up and identify myself. And then as I let go of the, of the transmit button, the repeater will transmit back. You will hear a, a sound when you let go of the transmit button. So to demonstrate, first I'll transmit on a channel, regular GMRS channel, simplex channel, as it's the experts call it. That's not configured to use a repeater. So you can see how it sounds. So I'm gonna hit the press to talk. That beep beep was my Roger beep because as I mentioned earlier, the ham radio guys, you see, they love that. But that's not the tone that you're listening for. You, what you'll hear other than the beep beep, nothing, no air, no static, no nothing. So now when I go to the repeater channel, now you could just key up and then listen for the sound back. That's a no-no. Oh, the ham guys will go crazy. And a lot of the repeater owners don't like you to do that. So I'm gonna key up the repeater. I'm gonna identify myself with my GMRS call sign. I'm gonna edit that out because you don't need to know my GMRS call sign. And I'll say I'm testing the repeater and then we'll listen back. Repeater check. I'm gonna try another repeater. Some will come back with an ID. So let's try, this is just another repeater to give you an idea what it sounds like so that I know I'm hitting it. Repeater check. If you heard there was a little bit of Morse code beep and then that static click. Repeater check. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like on a different radio that doesn't have the Roger beep configured. I forgot to turn the Roger beep on on my KG805G. I gotta to remember to do that because the ham radio guys love the Roger beep. So I'm just gonna key up, identify, I'm going to say repeater check, and then we're going to listen for that tone back. Repeater check. That's all there is to it. It's really not that difficult. After you go through the menu a few times and get the feel for how it works, it gets pretty easy. There is no lingo or rules or anything you have to abide by when you're using a repeater other than identifying yourself uh, at the end of your transmission, or if you're in a long conversation with somebody, identify yourself at least once every 15 minutes. You don't have to use any Roger Dodger codes or anything like that. Some people will tell you that it is against the rules to use codes like 10-4 and 1020 and 10-9. That's not true. There's no rules. You can say whatever you want, however you want to say it. No potty language because children are allowed to be listening on GMRS legally. So basically, don't be a dickhead. We're done here. Hopefully you've learned a few things. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, or if you're unclear on anything, leave a comment below. Stupid comments will be pinned to the top for everybody to marvel at. And I don't mean stupid like, oh, I'm not sure I should know this or you shouldn't know this kind of question because you, you have a actual question. That's not stupid. But what I mean by stupid comments, you know, you'll look 
After this video has been up for a few days, check to see what's pinned at the top. You'll see what I mean. So leave the comment below. I'll try to answer it. I'll do the best that I can. If I'm not able to answer it, somebody else will come along. I'll probably get it wrong, in which case I'll have to come by and correct them. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trip.